Thanks for stopping by CSET Biology TCP. You can find us online at tcp-academy.teachable.com. You can also find us online on YouTube at CSET Biology TCP. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at a food test. We're going to be testing for non-reducing sugar. You would have seen our other videos on food tests where we looked at testing for reducing sugar, testing for protein, testing for fats and oil, and we also tested for starch. If you have not, you are going to be seeing a link to those videos at the end of this video. We're going to be testing the skills, observation, reporting, and recording, measurement, and manipulation, and of course, analysis and interpretation. The aim to this lab is to determine a new trend found in various food substances. And this aim goes across all the food tests that we'll be doing. It's important to note here that this is the only lab, as it were, for food tests that is required by the CXC to be completed in a table. This lab is ideal for students who are doing biology, human and social biology, integrated science, or other students who might have interest in food tests. The teachers will find this video very informative and a good platform on which to lay their lesson on nutrition. The apparatus reagent needed for this lab are dropper, test tube, test tube rock, boiling tube, beaker, glass rod, 10 ml measuring cylinder, Benedict solution, splint, glucose, onion, scallion, sucrose, dilute hydrochloric acid, and of course, sodium hydroxide. To carry out this experiment, we are going to be continuing with the reducing sugar that we started, after which we are going to up on right into the non-reducing sugar as we will explain why it is important to use the hydrochloric acid in this experiment. So the reducing sugar will see us adding Benedict solution to the mixture, shake, and then we are going to be eating that mixture looking for a color change. If it is positive, we are expecting a brick red precipitate or an orange precipitate. Let us up right into the experiment. The substances being used here are pretty much grouped A to D. In A, we have crushed onion solution, B, glucose solution, C, Crush escalian solution and D, we have sucrose solution. Now, all the others could be classified among a starch group that are seen or classified as monosaccharide or disaccharide. And of course, here we have the sucrose solution, which is classified as a disaccharide. Let's talk more about it as we go along in the experiment. Now we're going to be adding the Benedict solution to the mixture in the container, after which we are going to be eating this container to a boil. Temperature must go above 60 degrees Celsius. You have to pay close attention to this experiment as we are expecting the color in the boiling tube to change as we go along into the experiment. So you're seeing the water there boiling outside of the test tube in the water bath. And pretty soon we are expecting to see the color of a content in the test tube, boiling tube there, changing to reflect what's happening inside the tube. Remember, if there is reducing sugar present, we are going to be seeing an orange color. And if the test continues, it would go up into red precipitate. It's going pretty nicely here. And if we observe the flame is out, it's now boiling. So we can put the flame out and observe what is happening. It's very important for you to time this experiment and also to note the temperature at which we should maintain the experiment. The experiment must be maintained at a temperature above 60 degrees Celsius. Now it's also important that we pay attention to the screen as we're seeing changes in color from one to the other. 
it's very important to record all color changes in your table as you document your, ex your observation for this experiment. So you are seeing the changes taking place pretty slowly there, but over time, it could reflect the desired color. Interesting to note here is that the boiling tube in D has not changed. However, the color for A, B, C have all changed to reflect an orange to brick red precipitate. Remember, as we go through the color change, four things could happen. It is possible that no reducing sugar is present. Trace of reducing sugar is present, and that would be reflected in somewhat a green yellow precipitate. If reducing sugar is present in more than just a trace, then we are expecting an orange red precipitate, which suggests that it is moderate the amount of reducing sugar. Now, if reducing sugar is as a whole lot there, then we're expecting a brick red precipitate which suggests that it has large amount of reducing sugar. As is the case here in A with a crushed onion, the case here with B with a glucose solution, and the case here with C with a crushed escalian solution. That to say, we are not detecting a glucose or reducing sugar, so to speak, in D as we are testing sucrose, a disaccharide, for something that we are expecting to find among our monosaccharide example, the glucose. So here we want to now work on D only to find out if we can get that reducing sugar from sucrose solution, which indeed is a non-reducing sugar. So we move on into the other experiment to look at non-reducing sugar. There we have it. So acid will be used in this experiment, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is pretty much used in the experiment to break the bonds of the sucrose, which is of course a disaccharide. It was broken down to fructose and of course glucose. Or it will be broken down to glucose and fructose. Let's look right at the experiment. So here we have added the content of sucrose solution in our boiling tube. And we are now going to be adding the, of course, hydrochloric acid to the mixture. So we have here one centimeter cube being added to the content of the boiling tube. And we continue with the experiment by applying some heat to this setup. So we're just going to be eating it for about 60 seconds, that's a minute, with the mixture of sucrose and hydrochloric acid, as our intent here is to break the bonds that exist in this disaccharide. We want to get it down to the monosaccharide state to see if we could test there for reducing sugar. So here we know that we are working with sucrose, which is table sugar. Uh, to find out if it contains reducing sugar. But from what we're seeing here, the first part, it is a non-reducing sugar. So now we're breaking the bonds to make it smaller, the bonds smaller, to get that non, to get that reducing sugar. So the time is about to expire. And we're going to be moving the experiment into another phase. So time is out, so we can put the flame out. So the flame is now out. We now have to neutralize the solution. Remember, we just added hydrochloric acid, so it's somewhat acidic now. We're going to be adding one centimeter cube of sodium hydroxide solution to the content. If we recall, the content is now acidic, as, of course, hydrochloric acid was added to it. So we go right ahead with that, uh, sodium hydroxide added. And again, we are going to add some Benedict solution to the content of the tube. You want to follow the screen closely to ensure that you have the most accurate thing documented and your report will be accurate. Now the Benedict solution is added to centimeter cube. We are going to continue eating this 
Check up. So we're eating the mixture here. Now to see if we can get reducing sugar. The bonds of the non-reducing sugar would have been broken by the high temperature and the hydrochloric acid. So now we're expecting the content of the tube to be reducing sugar. So we're going to be eating this and looking for that color change. Now we're going to be expecting the same color change as it were with reducing sugar experiment that we could, we carried out earlier. So we're going to put the flames out here. Water is heated and we're going to find now our little bubbles are coming up. And as they come up, we are expecting the color of the content in the tube to change slowly. It's very important for you to observe the change and document each change as we move from one phase to another. Now, if you take your eyes off the screen, you might be missing out on that which you should be covering. I strongly suggest that you don't. Instead, you observe what is happening carefully so that you can document the correct observation. Remember, this is the last in the food test that you're expected to do. It comes right after reducing sugar. And this, of course, is non-reducing sugar. I do hope that you enjoyed this presentation. If you did, I ask that you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to this channel and share this video with as many persons as you so desire. Also, leave us your comment. And if you want it to be a part of your playlist, just click that thumbs up, the like button, to ensure that you always have access to this video, be that it is unlisted or public on YouTube. Thanks much for watching. Please be reminded to join us on YouTube at CSEC Biology TCP. You may also join us on our website at tcp-academy.teachable.com. Thanks much for watching.